welcome everyone. It's been a few months since we saw, saw you last and we're here very proudly at the new Bremont Manufacturing Technology Centre. I mean, it's been a long time in the coming. We're a few months late, obviously, with what's going on, especially on this day of um, reflection today, a year since this whole thing started. But uh, we're excited, aren't we? Oh, yes. But I'm sorry you're not physically here. Normally, our townhouse releases we have every year, you can come in, you can touch, you can feel our new watches. But today it's going to be slightly special because we're going to give you a full tour around the new Manufacturing Technology Center, otherwise known as The Wing, and we're going to show you our new releases. But we have a little intro video we're going to start with. So I hope you enjoyed the, the video um, of the wing. We're now upstairs in our meeting room space and it's been a long journey to get to this point. I think it's 19 years now, isn't it, we've been at it? I know, and it's what's quite interesting as well. We, um, Giles and I were chatting about it the other day. We were saying, look, um, what did we say you know, 20 years ago what we wanted to try and achieve? And we dug out the mission statement we wrote. Um, I thought we'd read it out because it makes it's quite interesting reading. So this is what we wrote sort of uh, 15, 20 years ago about what Bremer was going to do. So the idea was to make exquisitely engineered mechanical timepieces on British soil with the lofty objective of reinvigorating the nation's horological past, using our adventurous spirit, passion for detail, desire to innovate and dedication to the highest quality of customer service and satisfaction. And I kind of... With, it's, it's kind of what we're trying to achieve, and it's, we, we've kind of got there in a way, haven't we? And I think if Charles and I can still look back in 20, you know, 20 years' time, if we can look back and say, what was Brown all about? It would be about that, wouldn't it, really? And I think it's just been a lot of hard work to get to this point, hasn't it? We and haven't aged. We had not at all. I didn't have, I, I look at those photos of my, some, you know, no grey hair in the early And stage. I just use Pedro's yeah. hair scissors for my um, lockdown haircut. So. And I have my bouncer with me today. Yeah. So, so I think that the, the idea to get to this point is, is it's been this long journey to bring bits of manufacturing. You can't do it all in one go it's very complicated we're doing it in a country with we have lost so much of that skill set from hardcore engineering you'll see later on we'll go into a, a, a machine room to the watchmaking side of it um, but this is a 35,000 square foot um, uh, in, infrastructure which it's been totally custom designed hasn't it for watchmaking no, it has. It's um, uh, what's interesting enough when, when Giles, and we're very lucky actually to, along the journey, we've had some incredible people helping us doing it as well, because it's no mean feat when you're effectively presented with a, a beautiful building on the outside and then you have to go, right, let's design it on the inside. And there's a huge amount of um, operational through flow and, and just we've, we're lucky in terms of watchmakers who've done it many times before in the past and we've we've sort of harnessed that experience, haven't we? So we've got something really quite special, which will hopefully now take us through to the next few decades, actually. Oh, it is. And you're, you're wanting, we always wanted this custom setup because you know, the, the pressure systems, where we do our watch assembly, the filtrated air, to the machine shop, which is naturally a very dirty environment, having that all under one roof has taken huge amounts of investment to, to get it right. Um, and yeah, I think planning to get to this point is five years. Yeah, well, we started, years. I remember the drawing, we worked with a credible architect, Spratlers, to come up with a design. Um, and uh, that was five or six years ago. And then obviously going through all different planning procedures. And then when finally that was granted, we started work, which was promptly stopped 
uh, a year and a bit ago and then restarted again. So we're here now and uh, yeah, we cannot thank enough, you know, all the people who support us along the, the journey, not just you know, the contractors and everyone getting this done, but, um, but all of you um, who have helped support the brand over the years, because uh, there's no way we've got anywhere near to doing this. And, and you could all pat yourselves on the back because this is all you, it really is. Oh yeah, and this is very much Bramall part two, this next stage in our journey. And we'd, well, we have a little video to probably sort of show you around um, the whole of the wing. So uh, let's, should we play that? Yep, let's do it. Hopefully you enjoyed that. It, that was a whistle-stop tour using that drone, um, and you had a quick look around everything from, you know, the the facility, the area up there just behind you where the, um, the machining happens, the bar metal going in to the watchmaking, which is you know a couple of floors of assembly, but also after sales and movement assembly and things, um, and then the rest of it. But um, yeah, it's quite it's quite fun to look around, isn't it? But it it's is. designed for tours. This place, it's designed to have a look around. We want you to come and tour around. We want all of our customers, we want potential Bremer owners because to come here, because when you see what goes into building a watch and the investment we've had to make, suddenly you appreciate why these watches, these mechanical watches are so very special. And we are going to be charging you £25 fee to going around, but all net proceeds will go to charity. And um, we're aiming as a business to get to a million pound charity mark, which we will do from all our charity fundraisings over the years uh, in the next 12 months. Um, but from these tours, we're gonna to be starting um, uh, supporting different charities, but starting off with John Egan Trust. And it's such a wonderful charity, founded by the wife of- Emma. Yeah, yeah um, Emma, who's wife of John, who died um, in the Red Arrows, um, awful. A death and, and Emma set up this just amazing charity which is supporting very disadvantaged children and we've had some of them come around for tours in our own old facility. It's very powerful, isn't it? Oh, it's well. just so emotive and I think yeah, if we can help raise their profile and necessary funds then I think uh, um, we've done our job. So that will be the first charity and they will change moving forward. But this it's designed for tours so when we set up this building 35,000 square feet of 
watchmaking space, but it was designed to be able to bring people to have a look around. So, you know, when the smoke lifts, this COVID smoke, um, please do come and book yourself in and come and try and have a, have a look around. And we'll be doing everything from, you know, quick tours to later on when everything settles down to proper training courses if you, if you would like to get into, if you're a real watch, you know, uh, you Geek. know, ge- I didn't want to say that, but uh, <laughs> we're definitely geeks. We're about um, watches, but let's talk about watches yeah, now. Good point. Because the Supermarine, tell us about this. So this is our time of the year where we talk about new releases, and we're obviously developing watches the whole time. And we used to show them at Basel. We, you know, in Switzerland, so Giles and I used to trundle off and mix along uh, with sort of several hundred Swiss watch brands. Um, we then had Townhouse. Um, now we have the Wing, and. Uh, this is our virtual launch, but we have got. I'll start with the. I'll start with the uh, Supreme Chrono. So I've got two watches in front of me here. Um, Giles is holding the blue dial one. I'm holding the black. It's designed um, basically to be a very robust uh, dive chronograph, following along the lines of the whole Supreme range. We've got a Supreme aircraft behind us here. Um, based on the whole, I mean, the, the name came from obviously the, the aircraft company, famous for the Spitfire, but also for the Schneider Trophy aircraft you see there. Um, so it's another addition to that range. But we wanted to design a chronograph which was, um, you know, by their nature, chronographs have to be bigger because of the way the movement is constructed and the different, fu- you know, the additional parts and functionality. But it, we've kept it as thin as we possibly can. You've got this beautiful ceramic bezel, um, which is a uh, is bi-directional because of the um, uh, 24 hour zone on top, because it's a GMT as well. And you've also got the screwing pushers and screwing crown and uh, big, big exhibition back, which sort of, you know, is, is amazing considering it goes down to 200 meters, isn't it? Um, it is, because it's quite challenging that. And we developed it when we did um, a limited range on the 500 watches. Um, the ability you know, to put a thick crystal in what is a relatively thin case, so you can go down to those depths. Um, obviously, 200 meters is, is mid-range in our diving watches. Um, the, the core starts off with the Supreme 500, went to the 2000 meter, and this is down to the you 200. See, well, if you come to a tour, you can see the pressure tester for the 2000. I mean, it's actually quite scary, isn't it? Is, it? Isn't it? These big flashing lights come on everything. But, it's, um, but also, what's exciting is you come here, see all that happening, the testing, but also the case being made beforehand and everything being assembled. So it's, um, it's yeah. all happening here. Yeah, no, so I think it's a, it's a, it's a lovely watch. Not, I mean, if, if I was a full professional diver, I'd go for the 2000, but I want that chronograph functionality. Yeah. I want to use it slightly different and the GMT, which is fantastic. Um, and also we've been lucky enough to work with um, incredible ambassador of ours over the years, um, Jason Fox, who ex-Marine, ex-Special Forces, SBS. And he's been um, well and truly testing this watch for us. Um, and here's a little clip of him. When it comes to like enduring the elements, you know, what mother nature can throw at you, surviving and enduring those moments is all about the head. You have to be able to tell yourself that I am gonna get through this and I will endure this. I know what I need to do to get to the end and this is finished. As soon as I decided to join the special forces, even on selection, you know, you have to dig deep for long periods of time and endure hardship. Without the right kit, you're going nowhere and so I always make sure that I've got the right kit to get me through to the end something that will last from everything from boots clothing rucksacks you need a trusty timepiece that's going to last that can endure situations with you I'm Jason Fox ex war marine commando ex special forces operator and I am a Bremont ambassador I mean, obviously, I could have done everything that Foxy just did in that video, but um, yeah, and, and yeah, not no, you. But I trained him, of course. <laughs> Nick got the haircut just to uh, yeah. be in the, uh, the military zone. But we're going to move on to our next Supermarine. Um, this is the 302. Um, all the Supermarine family all have the similar DNA, all ISO chronometer rated. And we're, we're following the theme of GMT here because 
we, we came out with the 300 um, a few years back. Um, we never put a GMT into it. Um, the 40 mil case is a really I, nice size. You know, it? it's probably my favorite size. It's just so nice to wear on the wrist. It's really, really easy, isn't it? Oh, the ceramic um, bezel. This is um, unidirectional, not bi-directional this time because it's got the countdown um, a timer on top rather than the uh, GMT timer markings. They are on the internal bezel. Um, 300 meter water resistance. Um, and we're launching this with a new strap, the um, Sahara strap, which is um, it's the cream color. It's quite deserty, well, it's isn't designed, it? It's designed to sort of blend in with the, the, the 51 loom, which has become a bit of a trademark of, the, of, the, of Bremel, really. And uh, it has a sort of vintage feel to it. But, but as with all of our watches, you know, this is designed to also go on bracelets, on rubber straps, on, you know, you might want to go oh, brown strap. And yet, I, you know, if you don't like a strap, change it. I mean, if you put that strap on, it'll look beautiful as well. So um, that's, that's always customi customizable. Um, burnt orange GMT hand, which is a really lovely color. So it stands out, but not too much. And it's so, when we're designing them, when Nick and I sit down, it's, you play around with all these colors and you can easily kill a watch by getting that slight Pantone. Especially uh, if gels get involved. Yeah. yeah. Um, now this is also, this watch is going to be worn by Nick Butter as he, um, the endurance runner who's... Oh, amazing guys. <laughs> run over 800 marathons, so many world records to his name. And his, his next big venture um, is over 100 days, he's going to run two marathons a day around the UK. Phenomenal uh, individual. I think he's run over 45,000 miles. Well, he did, he was known also for running a marathon in every single country in the world. I think it's 193 or so marathons and in a very short period of time. And uh, you talked to him about that. It was an incredible feat because just logistically getting there and I mean, very ill, you know, he was, I mean, it was amazing, wasn't it? To watch? Know, he's, but he's, this is no less uh, impressive what he's just about to do, is it? And, and I think the, you know, someone who wants a slightly smaller watch, the, the 40 mil, um, it's slightly less weighty than very something robust. like the, um, the, the 2000 or, or the, or the um, Supermarine Chrono, but it's a really lovely watch. So um, keep your eye on Nick on his run, but also um, yeah, the, the 302, which should be coming out very soon. Great. Well, I'm going to go downstairs now and show you another part of the wing. Um, Nick, why don't you give a, everyone an update on where we are with Rolls Royce and the speed attempt? Perfect. See you later. Right. Um, so, we, 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 Giles and I have known uh, Rolls Royce and the, the aviation side of Rolls Royce for uh, many, many years, going back to um, actually the Spitfire that uh, our father used to operate, now operated by. Rolls-Royce as their sort of mascot. So there's always been a really lovely relationship there. Um, and we got chatting to them, I mean, it must be sort of a couple of years ago now, but this speed attempt they were trying. Rolls-Royce were obviously known for their incredible um, prowess in engine making, going back to, you know, Second World War, the 1930s, but all sort of many jet engines used in military and civilian aircraft now. But there is a, a move, isn't it, globally now towards electric flight, and they want to break the speed record in, um, in, in aviation. And they've built this incredible aircraft, the Ironbird, um, which they're hoping to, to operate and, and take to the skies in the next few weeks. And we're lucky enough to get involved with them, not only as a timing partner, um, but also as a sort of technology partner. We've helped build so, for example, some of the escape mechanism in the cockpit and some of the cockpit design itself. So you'll see a, a traditional Bremel stopwatch and clock in there, as well as the, the high-tech um, you know, aviation um, instrumentation you expect from an aircraft like that. But also what was quite lovely is they said, look, let's do a watch along the lines of uh, not only timing, but um, some of the material technology that they're such experts in. So we came up with this watch here, which is the, the Iron Bird, and it's a lovely, lovely watch. It's uh, titanium, very, very light indeed. Um, it's got a beautiful case with this crown guard, um, and it's quite a retro looking watch, but it's got this um, sapphire bezel, um, bi-directional. Um, it's a GMT again, so very useful for flying, and it's gonna be used in this record attempt. Now, 
So keep your, please do look out for this because this is going to be happening in the next few weeks. Now we're going to go down to Giles now, who's going to tell you about another watch we're just about to release. Thank you for that, Nick. And now we're now downstairs. Um, this is our sort of breakout area, but what I'm going to take you in is our the machine shop where we make all those dirty components. And the, the beauty of this building is the fact that we've got the machining part of our business. We have obviously the admin, but you then have the watchmaking and there are different levels of cleanliness that you require. And to have it all under one roof is really just quite unique. Um, this is our military area. Uh, so when you're coming for a tour, you can see a few of the many military watches we've made over the years. And this is just some of the squadrons. There's something part of our business we're so proud of because it's not just a model standing in front of a plane doing the pose. These are proper pilots, proper military guys, Army, Navy, Air Force from all over the world wearing our watches. And I love the fact they love their mechanical timepieces so much. So come in here. I'll hold the door open for you. So we're machining components to about five microns. A human hair is about 60 microns in thickness. And to do that, obviously in, in all those years ago, we're done on handcrafted lathes and all of that um, to get that quality. But now it's all about very big pieces of CNC kit. We still haven't finished setting up in here. We're, we are using the machines. They're still live. Um, machining all the cases, starting on um, uh, some more interesting areas of machining as well. And in the next probably two months, there's a whole load more kit. We still have our old operation up at Ruskin. We'll probably have that for the next couple of years in the, in the um, and well, as we come and move everything over. But yeah, buying new kits, really exciting. Um, operating it, we obviously um, haven't got many machinists who have been building watches in the UK. So we've got you know, machinists from Formula One, arms, medical industries, all different areas who can operate these um, and obviously the design processes that go around there. But um, it, I love the smell of oil. So let's go back. I want to um, introduce you to our next watch. So we made our first um, military watch with um, Her Majesty's Armed Forces collection over two years ago now. And that came from all of our military work, working with the MOD, the broadsword, the Argonaut, and the arrow. And it's a really lovely, almost our entry price point collection into the Bremel range. But I think as three new watches, all based on those dirty dozen, it's just their really lovely collection. I, and, Nick and I wear them a lot. The Argonaut around the Navy um, is something that actually we, we just wanted to have a play with the color scheme on that. So here we are. Here is 2021, the Argonaut Azure. Sunburst blue dial, um, different color blue on the internal bezel. There's a compressor case with a lock-in um, uh, screw and crown for the internal bezel. Um, still 100 meter water resistance. On the back, you have the three emblems of the three armed forces. We don't make our military collections with the broadsword arrow on. There's a reason for that. Legally, you're only allowed to put the broadsword arrow on a watch if it's owned by the government. So all government property has that broadsword arrow. Obviously, we're selling these to the general population. So legally, you cannot put that broadsword arrow on it. Uh, we have orange Temple Island strap. This has to be warm on your post-summer holiday. Once you've got out of all this COVID stuff, um, it really stands out. Obviously, you can change it to the leather. Um, any other strap you, you wish, you have a look on the website. But this uh, really making rubber straps comfy is actually really difficult. You've got to get that, um, the rubber just right on it. But um, I really like this 42 millimeter nice and thin, very comfortable to wear. Um, this is Nick's um, Argonaut. That was the original Argonaut. 
the blue orange hands um, uh, on this nick on his custom strap. So yeah, we, we wear our MOD collection uh, a lot. Now, I think Nick is outside. Uh, we're going to go and see him. He's going to talk about the Jaguar collection. We obviously have a good um, E-Type bonnet around. We launched our E-Type collection last week. So let's go and find out and see how he's getting on. And we all know we've had a Brennan fan quite a long term relationship with Jaguar, probably over 10 years now. Um, and it started with working with some beautiful designs on the 675 and the, the cars like the continuation E Type lightweight. But this year is very special. It's the 60th anniversary of the E Type, arguably the most beautiful car in the world. And I'm standing beside one here, a beautiful Series 1, um, a coupe version, so the hard top. And it is one of these together with what the next car I'm going to show you, which made this mad dash down to Geneva in 1961 in front of the, the, the crowds to, to, who just saw this beautiful car for the first time. So this is a 4.2 litre. We've now got the Roadster version with a convertible, again, just as beautiful. Um, this one, again, is Series 1, but, uh, you know, the lines, just everything about it is just perfection in my book. And then we get to the, the latter years, and there's, there's quite a beast of a car here. This was the sort of one of the final versions of the E-Type, and it was the, the V12, made predominantly for the, for the US market. Big, grunty, heavy car designed for the big open roads, but still very beautiful still. And you may have seen last week we released a, a watch and a rally timer to celebrate the 60th anniversary um, of this incredible car. Here's a little video for you to watch. So hopefully you enjoyed that video where you saw not only those beautiful uh, continuation 60th anniversary E-types, which were, you know, I think there's only six pairs of them, 12 cars in total being made, um, but also the, the lovely chronograph and the rally timer that goes with it as a box set. Now, <clears throat> this car I'm standing in front of here, obviously an E-type, but it means quite a lot to my brother and I because it's a car which our father restored for our mother probably about 40 years ago. And it's one of those cars that's always going to be in the family. And it's done a few big adventures. This one, Giles and I took a couple of years ago across uh, North America, where we started in sort of upstate New York, drove down the Appalachians to Charleston on the East Coast, and then back across through sort of Alabama. We did all the Memphis bit. What else did we do? We went to Texas, Joshua Tree, Eve went through Death Valley and ended up in LA. So that was um, clearly very much related to work, that trip. But we, um, we fitted it in. It just shows you can do these trips in these cars. But over here is quite a special car. This is the 364th E-Type ever made. It was made for the US market. Um, hence, the, you can see the bumpers on the left, um, the left steering, obviously. Um, flat four, 3.8 Roadster, absolutely stunning and very, very original. Um, but in it is something rather special as well. And here it is, that watch we've been talking about, and it's uh, the Chronograph Jaguar. Um, and uh, this is the racing green version, but here you can see the, the rotor on the back matches the steering wheel. And it's a sports chronograph, so it's, it's you know, water resistant to 200 meters. It's got a, a lot going on for it. But I do love the rally timer. It's the first time we've ever done a rally timer. Um, this one's, um, you've got the chronograph on the left-hand side, split the chronograph, and you've got the, the clock on the right-hand side with a beautiful 
engine tunnel back plate, but you can use it in the car, you can mount it into your car, but also use it at a desk clock as well. But more importantly, or just as importantly, with these two timepieces comes a rather incredible experience where you go to Fenend, where Jaguar's test track is, and you get the chance to drive three very, very special E-types. So now we're going to join my brother who's in reception and he's got some other interesting things to show you. Thank you, Nick, outside there. Now we're inside in our boutique. Every, the wing obviously needed a boutique, but what's really special about this boutique is behind us, you can see watchmakers assembling, building your watches, um, obviously COVID friendly environment, all the clean rooms behind, all the polishing, all the safes, all of that built in this area, two floors of it. Um, proper insulated, uh, uh, high pressure environments for cleaning the air. So um, yeah, that's, that's just brilliant to be able to sit here and see all that happening. We've also got something else, you know, saving it to the end. It's a really exciting partnership for us. It's a, it's a sponsorship, but it's a big technical partner as well. We have the Williams Racing Partnership. And in our boutique at the moment, we have the Williams car um, in the new paint scheme. Um, and as a Oxfordshire based company, it's, it's more than just um, a, a branding exercise. This is a technical partnership. Uh, we can share manufacturing, CNC technical skill sets. It's an exciting one, isn't it? I know, I tell you what's so lovely. First of all, sublime to ridiculous, isn't it? You've got something very historic and special out there and something very high tech and special in here as well. But there is a very similar skill set. You realize that a lot of our guys who are working in the engineering area that Giles showed you earlier worked on these beforehand. And there is going to be a lovely sort of fusion, isn't there, and, and transfer of knowledge base, including apprenticeships. That's a big step forward for us on the global stage. Um, but what a lovely partner to be work working with. And um, we've got a little bit of video which we can show you. Formula One is all about timing, so it's great to have a timing partner because that's what we're all about. You know, Bremont and Williams is a perfect match and for us as Williams as a very traditional British team that is still globally, it's very special for us to work with a British company. Another thing where we match perfectly is watches and Formula One is all about precision. Bremont watches are tested beyond endurance. So driving around the racetracks with us at 200 miles an hour, we'll be putting the watches to a test and seeing how they get on with all of those horses. So keep your eyes out for this weekend at the Bahrain Grand Prix, the first one of the season. They'll be wearing their World Timer Blues. Um, and uh, this is the new livery of the car. It's quite exciting, isn't it? Oh, it's so exciting. And I love the color scheme. Um, but I think this is drawing to an end. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. I really hope you enjoy the new watches and the tour. And come and see us. Really love come to and show see you us. Um, I hope it's the new, new era in, uh, in watchmaking this country as well. But we would really like to show you around. So hopefully see you soon. Look forward to it.